Okay, this is the uh, follow-up for the second Psychic Challenge. Uh, again, thank you everyone who's participating. Uh, I hope you're having as much fun with this as I am, or, or more so. Uh, real quick, I've got various things going on in my personal life. Um, if I'm not saying that I'm not going to be able to continue to follow up with this, uh, but if things, you know, like me getting thrown out of my house, which will happen at some point, and I've got to move my computers, and there's going to be a lag as to when I may and may not be able to sign on and whatnot. Um, if somebody could volunteer uh, to pick up if I should have to drop this off, um, and I'll kind of give instructions as to, you know, how I'm doing things and where I see things going, uh, by all means, um, you know, let me know. And then, you know, if it comes to that, I'll, I'll kind of give some instruction. But for now, I'm going to try and stick with it. Um, and hopefully it'll all work out. Uh, the, uh, this last challenge was kind of interesting uh, from my point of view. I want you all to know I did not set out to trick anybody or to do anything that might have misled you. That being said, I think it's very, very important to notice there was a theme in a lot of people's guesses. I had turned around and picked something up off of my tarot table, or the table I use for tarot, and then I moved around and turned toward my bed, and you really couldn't tell where I was picking things up from. But because there was a setting that you saw me in, I think that that might have colored a lot of how you perceived what it was that I put in the box. And that shows that um, you weren't really, a lot of you weren't really tuned into just letting the images or words or whatever comes to your mind. There was still part of that observation at work. And you, we need to get away from that. You need to totally clear your mind, make it totally blank. You know, kind of go into a, a meditative nirvana of sorts. You, you, you really don't even want to try to focus on what's in the box at first. At first, your, your focus has to be very, very strong on clearing your mind of all thoughts. And if a thought comes into your mind that you think might have been um, caused by your observation, you just let it float up in a way. And when all those have floated up in a way and your mind is totally clear, then what you're focusing on will come. Okay, so it had nothing to do, it was no type of talisman, it was nothing that had anything to do with uh, what you would find um, on my tarot deck or what somebody would use for uh, spiritualism. Uh, I will show you the object in a moment. And you know the sad, the sad thing is, I had set it on my tarot table just so it would be handy. Just so I could get to it to put it in the box when I did the video. And not only did I put it there, when I rolled the dice for the previous challenge, it was in plain sight. You probably couldn't see it very well, and I didn't notice till after the fact. So I, uh, I think that I will. Um, well, let's let's let me show you what it is. Here's the box. Okay, what this is, it's hard to see on here very well. I, I intentionally picked something that was probably something most people would not recognize. This is a mnemonic compression joiner fitting. I Some of you had might have known that I had gotten some temp work, and uh, the pneumatics... Uh, are what the machinery that I was working with you was was based in. 
so you had these tubes and if you had two tubes that needed to join there's compression fitting on each side of this and so one tube would go into one side and the other tube would go into the other side and they would be joined and say this is a compression fitting so as the tube would seat into here it would get pushed in and it seats in and when you try to pull it out it's gripped it won't pull out unless you really yank hard on it uh, it's white it's got little orange compression fittings on the end here and you know some people said something about it being made of metal um, well there is metal to it there is metal in it it's not so it, it's metal and some type of plastic so I'll probably give points for anybody who said metal uh, I think one person might have said orange I, I'm not sure I'll have to look back uh, but remember if I remember correctly what, what did we say five points for each correct guess and two subtracted for each wrong one uh, I'll have to look at the old video to make sure I think that was the arrangement uh, but that is what it was so when I you know it, it I guess it's a good thing when we think about the fact that there is a lesson in this for all of us. Uh, so many people did make guesses that were um, based on what I think they thought they saw. And you know what? Don't feel bad if you did. You, you, this could have been operating at a subconscious level, which means you've got to work even harder to clear your mind when you do these things. When you want to do anything like remote viewing or, or, or anything of that nature. Um, and this is why recently today I went on, I had quite a discussion and we went all back and forth about uh, what is real, what what works, what doesn't, uh, how do you know what uh, is, a, is a true ability. And because it is this difficult, that not only do you have to clear your, your mind consciously, but subconscious has to be cleared as well for you to tune in. Because you can subconsciously uh, make predictions based on your observation rather than on what you are seeing intuitively. So that's what this is. That was the item of the challenge. Uh, there's very few who, of you who, uh, who had you know any uh, close hits on it. Uh, I thought it was a fun way to go about it. Go back and watch the video and you'll see it sitting right there. Um, it's out of focus, but it's it, but it is in plain sight. Uh, you know, some some of you might try to say, well, well, maybe I perceived it was something on your table, and that's what threw me. Well, no, no, no I'm not I'm not buying that. Um, this was clearly uh, something that you could have in, picked up on with the proper amount of focus. Um, Somewhere there's a video of me talking about when I initially did this for the first time in my life and I was very, very lucky. I had a wonderful trainer and he guided me um, to describe the item perfectly. Anyways, so, so you know, I, I know a little bit. I'm not just some, you know, jerk trying to tell you, you know, how to do things because I, I think I know better. Um, I've had some level of experience with this. Uh, now, the next psychic challenge... Uh, once again, I want to give you some clues, but please make it very clear. These clues are not to lead you, they're, they're more to eliminate uh, the extreme number of possibilities. What you're, what you're going to have to do is I've printed a picture of somebody and put it in this envelope. The clues are, it is somebody who has passed on. It is someone who is no longer alive. Now, I, I thought about this for a moment and thought, gee, that, that leaves anyone who's ever lived who's not presently alive. And, and I thought, well, I'm going to give you this one more clue uh, because we are dealing with a lot of people in here who are British. And I will say that this person is an American. 
Now, once again, I only say that so that you have a frame of reference and a, a frame of origin. In no way should you take that as a clue as to who specifically this person is. So, in here is someone who is no longer alive and was an American. And that's all you'll get. So, once again, you're going to want to clear your mind. You want to want to focus on this envelope. Focus on whose image is in there and their life. And anything you come up with, um, we're going to, again, let's let's do it like this. You can make as many as 10 guesses if you want. We'll give 10 points for uh, every correct guess. Uh, every Anything that you mention about this person, you'll get 10 points. So that means there's a possibility of 100 points if you make 10 entries. But negative 5 points if you're wrong. So you can lose as many as 50. So you're going to want to be cautious with how many guesses you make. Um, and this is, you know, purely for someone because different people have different abilities, different traits. This might come easy to some. It might be harder for others. So if you really feel hot and on the ball and want to go for all ten, go for it. If you're not so confident, if you're not making the connection, um, by all means, you know, one or two or three guesses. I mean, I could, I could see an instance where somebody makes three correct guesses and outscores people who... You know, so there's just a lot of possibilities with how this is going to be, how this is going to go down. So it's a person, no longer living, and it's an American. Also, if you say something arbitrary like, well, this person liked jam. And I say, well, you know, there's really nothing in the historical record of this person having any great appreciation for jam and you say well yeah they did but it was just no, something nobody knew or wrote down no that, that's not going to cut it if you have some peculiar thing it's going to have to be something that can be historically uh, verified and there's a lot about this individual um, that you know like I say I didn't pick some random you know, I, I didn't go through the newspaper and find somebody that nobody knew this is this is somebody that uh, is a historical figure. So by all means, and once again, that's not a clue. I mean, let me let me backtrack on that. Um, there's someone who is well known. Let's just put it that way. I don't want to lead anyone into thinking. Um, you know, when I say historical, then that then that creates a reference. And I know I seem to be talking in a lot of circles, but I just want to get. I just after the last challenge, I just want it to to hit home. You have to do a total clearing of your thought process and of your mind in order to get to a state that you can make the connection. And since this is someone who's longer, longer alive, anyone who's a medium, any, any people who practice mediumship, hey, you, you might be able to contact this person directly. Um, I I'd like tell them I said hello if you do, okay? Because uh, so that's the challenge. Um, I'll get to work on scoring the last challenge. Uh, you can make as many, again, as many as 10 entries, 5 points for each correct one, N I'm sorry, 10 points for each correct, negative 5 for anything you say that's not correct. And, uh, and once again, um, I'm going to have to review the, the video, but somebody please, uh, Inform me, did I say uh, for the last challenge, it was, um, five and negative two, I believe. Well, I'll look it up. But hey, again, everyone, good luck to you. Thank you for participating. I hope this is uh, going to continue to be a lot of fun for everybody. Good luck.